The economy isn't just slowing, it's shrinking. And Democrats, well, they're pushing for even more tax hikes. Hatley Heath says that's just about the last thing that we need. Well, how come the, it's not resonating in Washington? How come they think that's the first thing we need? I think intuitively, Americans understand that we don't need tax increases. What we really need is economic growth, because then you decrease unemployment, you solve a lot of our nation's problems, and you get more revenue. So you could sort of hit two, two birds with one stone there. All right. Well, again, we're joined by Michael Linden and Ron Meyer. And I want to go to you, Michael. Um, listen. You know, everyone sort of agreed uh, four years ago that hiking taxes in, in, in a recessionary environment was a, a bad thing to do. Now it feels like maybe um, that doesn't matter to some people anymore. Well, I, I still think that we do need to be careful what we're doing to the economy. If you look at the GDP numbers from today, you see that actually consumer expenditures were up, business investment was up. Those are both good numbers. But the thing that was dragging down overall economic growth was government spending was way down. And in fact, in defense was a huge decrease in government spending, which is why we had a, that slightly negative growth. So we should not be slashing government spending right now just as as the economy is coming out of its its recession and, and this GDP number is, is absolute proof of that the tax increases don't seem to have any, have you know weren't even in place in, two, in, in the fourth quarter of 2012 so yeah. we're I don't know why we're even talking about that well Ron you know what I found interesting about the numbers is that uh, yeah government spending was down but non-defense government spending was actually up uh, got, you know it was defense spending that was down business inventories were down exports were down there were a lot of ugly parts to this report and certainly uh, raising taxes, in my mind, I don't see where any of the negatives would have made uh, been, become better. No, I think it was the uncertainty from the fiscal cliff. I really don't. I mean, if you look at government spending, actually, government spending uh, was about was over nine hundred billion dollars in the fourth quarter, which is higher than the third quarter, quarter, higher than the second quarter. So actually, government spending went up. But they're, they're picking cherry picking numbers because you're right. Defense spending went down, but other government spending actually grew. Like I said, government spending in this quarter was actually higher than the last two quarters. So to say that government spending has gone down is absolute fallacy. But, but Ron, it's cherry hey Ron, picking. It defense came out spending of the spin is government room. spending, right? Come again? Right. Ron? What, what did you say? I don't defense think government spending, spending ever helped. Defense spending economy. is government spending, right? And overall, government spending was down. I would make overall government spending was up. I don't know what I have to tell you. Nine hundred billion dollars this quarter. Last quarter it was eight hundred and forty billion dollars. Quarter before that it was uh, it was lower than that. So the fact of the matter is, no, we actually increased government spending overall. It was just defense spending that was that was down. And, and if you look at it, this economy has been going down the tubes. We haven't we've seen anemic growth at best because this president has been sucking all the money out of the private sector. Where do you get the money that is spent in Washington? It has to come from the private sector. Whether or not the Fed has to take it out with bonds, whether you have to tax it away, or whether you have to inflate the currency to actually get the money. It doesn't just come off of trees. You have to get the money from somewhere, and it oh, comes from investors. And, and I want to it comes from people who would be spending it. I, I, I want to get back to Hatley on this because, I mean, the issue really is uh, taxes. Now, yesterday we saw a consumer confidence report that was significantly below as, as expectations, and the key reason was people saw their paychecks. They were shocked. They were promised no middle class tax hikes. Of course, that's exactly what they got when the payroll tax came back, and now they're not sure. I mean, we've got a very tepid situation. Uh, the idea of hiking taxes right now, it seems like a very dangerous gambit. It is a dangerous game. If we do want to see any economic growth, then we shouldn't even be thinking about raising people's taxes any further. Ron's right. That's money out of the private sector into the public sector that can't possibly manage the money as efficiently. So when we look at what happened this January, yes, the psychological effect of getting that first paycheck and realizing, I don't know how I'm going to make ends meet this month or next, and the psychological effect of not trusting this administration that has been antagonistic towards business from the beginning. Obamacare is on its way, and it's <laughs> Be That's just a, talking a points. Huge problem. Stick, for stick job to creation. the actual numbers. Here. All right, Michael. Be, listen, I'm going to come to you last on yeah. this. We don't have a lot of time, yeah. but you will. Would you admit at least that the, the administration policies are more geared toward a, a fairness doctrine than a growth doctrine? No. I, first of all, I don't think those things are in in, con, in in conflict. I think those things work together. We can, know that can a strong we raise middle taxes class. And have, Hold on, and Charles. Grow the Hold on, the Charles. Same time. Hold on. We we know that a strong middle class actually means more growth overall. But listen, I I want to say I agree about the payroll tax cut. I wish that had not gone away. I did not think that was a good moment for us to let that go away. I'm I'm 100 percent on board with that. And I got to tell you that you know, look, I don't want to lay blame here, but I'm going to. That was all because of the congressional Republicans. I'm sure that the president would have loved to keep that. 
that, but the congressional Republicans did not want to see that. That was not a tax cut for rich people. The bottom line, so they didn't though, fight Michael, hold on a second, hold on a second, hold on. Bottom fiscal, line, no, I want to no. go through this, guys, one at a time fast. Yeah. Michael, I'll start with you. <laughs> yeah. Is it possible to raise taxes and grow the economy simultaneously? Absolutely. Ron, do you agree with that? I don't think that's the best model. I think economy can grow in spite of taxes, but no, that's not the best thing. And Absolutely not. And Hadley, you've already said that we need a pro-growth agenda, meaning put the taxes on the back burner when we can actually afford them. Absolutely. We'll have higher revenues when we have better growth. Yeah, we raised taxes in 1993 and we had enormous economic growth. So the idea that Michael, higher Michael, taxes what, and higher growth this? are can we just spend one dollar incompatible is just not true. Guess what? We'll have to finish this later. You guys have been fantastic. We'll have you back real soon.